Hey everybody, this is Dave and Jamie with Photo Jeepers, and today we're going to talk about filling the frame. Yeah, so the photos we're going to show you are from our group, Your Photography Journey. Every week we have a challenge, and um, they were these uh, group members were willing to share their photos so that we could talk about them and uh, discuss fill the frame. So um, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's look at these awesome photographs. All right, so um, this one by Tony Kendrick. So when we talk about fill the frame, one of the big things is, you know, it means get close, get close to the subject. Um, and we really liked this photo of the fireworks because usually, you know, you're so far away from a firework that you're kind of getting a lot of that black sky around it. But he got close and filled the frame with, you know, a really small portion of the entire fireworks. I really like that. Yeah, turned out really stunning. He did a great job with that. Yeah, so when you fill the frame, it really brings attention to what the subject is, and he did a good job on that one. That's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, and here, here again is another really great example of a fill the frame, and um, of a fill the frame photograph, and she's really focused on the, the character and the interesting aspects of this old truck, and uh, filled the photograph with that makes it very very interesting yeah it's a lot of character and a lot of different texture to that and I'm sure knowing Melanie that she kind of walked around and she tried to decide do I want just the front part of the um, truck do we want this this angle where I can see a little bit of the back area um, so that's key too when you're filling the frame be intentional and paying attention to what you want in that um, yeah. I think adding just this little bit of you know the back part really added to that character of that so yeah well and it really establishes what it is you know a pickup truck a big part of the of a pickup truck and the essence of what it is is the is the bed and yeah. the utility of it and so you know including a portion of that part of the subject into the photograph really helps to establish for the viewer exactly what it is but then minimizing like minimizing it like she has done brings the focus into the parts of the truck that she wanted to emphasize. Exactly. Yeah. So really good job on that one. Yeah, and then this is uh this is, you know, really focusing in on a like uh Jamie's talked about, really focusing in on a portion of the subject and emphasizing certain aspects of it and capturing the the pine cones and the snow on the uh, branches and that that's the the emphasis yeah so uh, Cindy did a really good job on making yeah. sure that you know our focus was kind of those pine cones right there and uh, filling the frame with it and she got herself close there and I like too that um, she has a a focus on three specific pine cones it's kind of it, it establishes kind of a pattern in the photograph which makes it uh, more interesting to the the eye of the viewer as well yeah and then uh, Melissa she focused in on one flower um, and you know as you're getting into that you can see that really neat detail of the water droplets you can also see the really uh, colorful details with the lines and you know getting close into one leaf that is uh, that's definitely filling the frame yeah. and you know mm -hmm. even though she's got little pieces of you know other foliage back there my my eye as a viewer goes straight to that leaf yeah yeah um, really focusing in on those water droplets provides a lot of interest and I like the contrast too the dark and the light contrast really helps it pop as well yeah it does all right so we talked about get close but what about getting even closer why not <laughs> <laughs> so Macro I mean, shots are fun. I mean, look at that. The difference between yeah. the one leaf and then getting close and just having parts of the leaf um, just creates a really neat interest right there. Yeah, she did a great job with this. Or he did a great job with this. Sorry, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> um, yeah, he did a great job with this um, and including two parts of the leaf and there's he's uh, shot it in a way that there's a real pattern and a symmetry to it. Um, so yeah, it's a great fill the frame shot. And I like the way that the black and white really highlights the different, you know, veins 
um, lines in there and it really brings out the water droplets as well. So um, good choice on turning that into black and white. Yeah. And, and then, then we're really getting, getting close. even closer. <laughs> yeah. It's really focusing in on the water droplets in this one. Um, I like the depth of field in this. That really uh, helps to increase the interest and the appeal of it and uh, focus right in on the subject. You got, you know, here again, just uh, a few little droplets right there that just pop out of it yeah. and focus. And Delaney, I think, did a good job of kind of doing rule of thirds. The subject is, you know, kind of yes. placed up here, and the rest of this, you know, is is around that. But that rule of thirds, um, placing that up there, really, really good job on that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then Bonnie, um, you know, she was able to eliminate kind of distractions in this area. So this is the Epcot ball, um, and really our focus is right on that um, that ball and all the colors and all of the patterns. You know, my eye is able to look at all of that, um, and she couldn't get in a place that just focused on the ball itself, or she chose not to, but I think adding this section in here... Um, you know, really adds to the story yeah. of where we're at. Yeah, I agree. Um, gives it a, a, a feeling of depth as well. And uh, it kind of gives it a feeling of a rule of thirds application to having uh, that foreground element included into it. So she's done a nice job with it. Yeah, she really did. And then, you know, a bicycle, it's kind of hard to really eliminate all the different parts unless you get close to uh, those parts and so you know Jeff did a great job on just focusing in on two different elements of this bicycle but yet there are other elements around it that I can see what it is but my eye focuses on those two two yeah. elements yeah and he's used depth of field very well in this one to create that effect and uh, really super great comp composition he did a good job yeah and I think having that sepia tone helps yeah. you know bring out the the old feel as well really nice that's a really beautiful portrait shot yeah. she did a great job with that um, or James. Or he did i'm sorry boy i'm gonna roll you are. i'm calling she, everybody. everybody i'm calling everybody <laughs> she's it's all good <laughs> yeah james did a great job with this and i i think uh one thing that really helps this work, the subject uh, being this little girl, is he's captured her her expression, her action, and then just a portion of the little dog included there uh, really completes the picture. Um, and I think the fact that there's only a, a part of the dog included into it, that completes the picture, but yet it doesn't detract from the, uh, from the subject. So... He, he's done a good job with this and it works really well yeah so he you know he filled the frame with the the height of the girl um, you know he filled that part of the frame and then only included the important part of the the other piece of this story instead of having the whole dog um, so really filling the frame is just focusing in on that important element that you want to tell um, and here with James Griffin it's okay to have a little bit um, extra space around that helps add to that. Having that foreground with that road helps to tell the story of going into that tunnel or into the um, covered bridge. You know, so yes, he could have included just the covered bridge and had no road in there and it would have been great, but having that road in there doesn't take away from filling the frame. It helps yeah. to tell that story. Yeah. And then this one... Um really filling the frame with the action, the subject's action. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what more. I mean, it's just take the action of the subject and fill the frame with it, and it, it's, a, it's a really cool photograph. Yeah, and it, you know, she added a little more space up here, and that helps us to kind of see that story and, you know, what's going on behind the swan. You know, that just all adds. And she chose not to include, you know, the feet or anything, you know, um, kind of in the foreground. She thought that adding more kind of in that upper area and the background was more important. Yeah. So. Well, it's all about the action of the uh, the swan 
you yeah. know, and um, the feet really aren't a part of what she's trying to capture yeah. here. So um, filling the frame and really focusing in on the action of the swan and the, um, I mean, you've got the the expression, the face, the the movement of the wings and everything captured real nice there. All right, and then this one with Jan, um, you know, she was purposeful and intentional on what she was filling the frame with and having this section of the bridge with that diminishing perspective going all the way through and giving the viewer kind of that depth. Um, it, it's just a, a, a wow photo. <laughs> yeah, really, really cool. She did a great job. Yeah, so, you know, finding those things that will create impact when you're filling the frame and not just saying, well, I'm going to fill the frame, you know, really being intentional to provide that impact. So she did a great job. Yeah. And then here again, um, you know, we've we've captured a really cool subject, or Ella has captured a really cool subject. We haven't. Yeah. And... Uh, She's filled the frame with this, uh, with the subject and with the action and the, the moment in this creature's life. Um. Yeah, and I think on this one, you know, we talked about the other one with Mel where she included things in the background. And here with Ella, she did include, you know, a little bit down below where the feet were. And I really like that little hint of reflection. Um, I think that adds to the story. And so... You know, when you're out in the field and you're looking at that, you know, kind of decide if I focus on the subject and I have a little bit above, does any of that add to it? If I add a little bit below that subject, does it add to it? And I feel like this really does add yeah. um, to that, having just that little bit down below. She could have chosen to just have it be, you know, cut it off there. Um, you know, really kind of just playing around with it. And it is okay to add a little, have a little bit extra room around the subject as well. Well, and in this particular case, it really grounds it out, provides yeah. a good foundation for it. Um, you don't have a real dynamic action going on or anything, so that foundation to ground out the photograph is really important. Yeah, good. All right, Goldhara, um, you know, we talk about that background, making sure that whatever you do include in the background doesn't distract from what your subject is. And he, you know, with this and the cactus, obviously this front cactus is what's filling the frame, but she's also filled the frame with that depth of field with other cactus behind it. And it just adds to that and makes this front one just pop. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. She did a beautiful job of it. So, you know, you can have those background elements that, you know, make sure they're not distracting and that they really are adding to it and... Here again. Yeah, and, and then in this one, you know, she just really focused in on um, the emotion, the character of the specific subject. And, uh, you know, you talk about, uh, Jamie mentioned applying the rule of thirds to these, these types of photographs. And she's really done that. The focus of this photograph, the real subject, is the, the eyes of this rabbit. And... Um, applying the rule of thirds to place the eye within the photograph really helps to draw the eye right to the eyes of the of the creature and to create the impact of the photograph. Yeah, so she, you know, did the rule of thirds, she was intentional and really this is the focus for us and then that background again isn't distracting, it just kind of adds to where this rabbit lives um, and where where she found that. So um, hopefully those ideas give you um, you know, some inspiration to go out and find things and know that you can fill the frame with various parts of the subject, um, you know, get close, move your feet, mm -hmm. use the zoom part, um, you know, get close and then get even closer. Sometimes we're afraid to fill our frame with only a part of something and sometimes those parts can create really neat interest and impact. Um, I know, so I'm afraid of that all the time. <laughs> getting close. <laughs> get close <laughs> all right um so that's it um we we do these challenges every week in our um, your photography journey facebook group and this is you know what they did and then we also do photo reviews that are very similar to what we just did here where we talk about the different elements that people included in their photos um and it, people are in the group really love that that they feel like they 
they look at how other people um, approach a photo and a subject and they're like, wow, I wish I, you know, that's really neat. I'm going to try that. Um, so we'll have the link below. You can join us. We'd love to see you there. And um, we also have a link below to the other various articles we have about uh, basic compositional techniques that will really help you improve your photography. And we'll... Yep, and great job to all the photographers that participated today. Really amazing photographs. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you next time. See ya.